Okay, so last episode we created ourselves a player object just like this, and we said that we are now ready to start scripting for our player to have some instruction. Um, we are going to start by looking at the inputs we're getting. So um, what we want to do in the end is we want to be able to move our player using our inputs that we send on the keyboard. So we're, um, we're pressing, say, the up arrow key, and we want to move our player using that instruction. Okay, but first we need to define what is an input. Inside of Unity, if you go up here in Edit and then Project Settings, you have a Input Manager over here. So click on Input, and if you look at your inspector now, you expand Axis, you can see that these, these are all the input that Unity registers um, inside of his Input Manager. Now what does that mean actually? It's a little vague to explain, but what we're going to do is we're going to create ourselves a input so you can uh, so you can understand what it does. So basically, what we're going to do first is we're going to wipe everything that is in there, and um, yeah, let's just wipe it. Let's start with something clean, with something new. So we're going to put the size on zero, and then back to one. So now we only have one element in our input manager. Expand this element, and now we can give it a name. Let's give it horizontal. Uh, descriptive name, you can put whatever you want in there. And then you have a positive and negative button over here. If we use that as an axis, we need to define a positive and a negative button. Now just imagine yourself, you have a axis, an axe axis. And um, when you're not pressing on any of those buttons, the value is 0. Now, if you're pressing on the positive button, the value is now 1. And if you press on the negative button, it is now minus 1. And we can use that information to tell whether are you, uh, in our case, are you pressing left or are you pressing right. So what we'll do is that we'll set the negative buttons to say A and the positive button to say D. Now, um, this is using the WASD control standards, and I will also be putting the alternate negative button and alternate uh, positive button as well. And the alternate negative is going to be left, and alternate positive is going to be right. So now we have a single axis that is called horizontal, and if we press on A, or if we press on the left arrow key, we are getting minus 1 as a value. Now if we press on D or the right arrow key, we're getting 1. So this is exactly what we are going to use for our controls. Now as for the rest of these values, you are going to put a thousand for the gravity, a thousand for the sensitivity, and we'll, we'll look at uh, what these do a little bit later on during the tutorial series. But for now, just make sure they are on thousand both of these and we are going to create ourselves the player script. So just go ahead, create a new c -sharp script, and we do that by right-clicking inside of the project folder. So um, go ahead and right-click on your script folder, create c -sharp script, and we'll call this um, player for now. Let's just call it player. Now on the right over here, you can see a preview of our script. Uh, by creating a c -sharp script inside of that folder, or I mean um, inside of Unity, we already have some information filled in for us. So we'll use that information to start coding a little bit later on, but just to explain briefly uh, how this works is, if we have our script over here, it's not going to do anything. It's not going to run. Nobody's going to read it by himself. So we need to take this script and make it a component of any of the objects that is um, currently active in the scene. So in our case, the player object, this cube over here, um, this is what we're going to use to apply our script. So just go ahead and click and hold on your script and you can simply drag and drop it on top of our object or on top of his inspector. Now if you do that in the inspector, make sure you have the right object selected. In my case, this is the player and the player script is now part of my player. Now hit apply and now we know that our script is going to be ran um, when the scene starts. So when we press play, it is going to be active. Okay. 
so now our script is ran but it doesn't do anything just yet so let's just go ahead and go inside of player script and make sure that we listen to the input we've just uh, entered inside of our input manager okay so let's start looking at these two functions over here um, they give you a function called void start another one called void update they also give you some nice comments which uh, I'm going to use to explain you exactly what it does so when you want to do something at the initialization initialization of yeah okay initialization of the object so in our case the player and our player is being in initiated when we press on play when you want to do something at that very moment then you can write your code inside of these two curly brace over here so you would you would write your code over here uh, say we're gonna start with a really simple instruction that says debug.log and we'll say we'll give it a sorry my keyboard is not in the right language we'll say hello world just like this so now whenever our player uh, is in initialized when he is initialized this is going to be called so this is going to do something in our game on our engine let's give it a um, let's give it a test real quick so say that we press play on this if we look at the console because this is what our uh, our instruction does it it's going to write something to the console inside of the unity engine so whenever this object is initialized so when we press play and the game starts then it says hello world inside of the console now let's say we remove that component we remove the player component and we clear our console we press play nothing happens this instruction is not ran we absolutely need to have our script somewhere in the scene now that being said reapply your player script on top of the player object and we're going to check the other instruction or I mean the other function they give us it is the update now let's put the debug.log hello world inside of the update we're going to press play on this and if you look at the console we're getting that message every single frame so every frame say if our game is running at 30 FPS we're getting that instruction 30 time a second now if you haven't understood what it does yet is um, the update is being called every single frame that our object is active now what do I mean by active is if that object was to be destroyed when we're playing so say our player dies and we want to destroy the player object so I'm going to hit delete at the runtime this instruction is not called anymore it's gone because our player script is also gone from the game now since we deleted our player while the game was playing um, it has no real effect on the state of our game so say we're, we're gonna stop the game uh, our player is now back to its original position and this might be a little bit annoying when you work with unity and I'm going to I'm going to show you why in a moment so say you're working in Unity, you're trying to place your object in the scene um, while it's playing. So you don't want your player to start over here, but you want him to start over here instead. If you're doing that while the game is playing, then you're going to have a surprise when you stop the game. It's going to go back to its original position before the game started. So if you make any modification on your object, make sure you do it while the game is not playing, else you might lose a lot of time just uh, moving stuff around and it's not going to affect your game basically okay so now back to our um, function over here what we wanted to do in the first place is we wanted to know are we pressing on our uh, A or D button or left or right arrow key to do that in Unity to check for input instead of the manager uh, the input manager in Unity you have to do input dot get in our case axis and we give it an axis name we named our um, we name our axis horizontal so this is exactly how you are going to get the information you want now this returns a float this returns a value inside of a floating point number we're going to need to keep track of that number 
So I'll go ahead and go up here, declare myself a private float that I call input. Um, I'll just call it input direction for now. And now we're going to store the result of this inside of input direction. So go on the left and we'll do input direction is now equal to input dot get axis horizontal. Good. So now the information of our input should be stored in that uh, float floating point number. Okay, so if we read that really quickly, it says every frame we are going to change the value of input direction for a number, a floating point number, in between minus 1 and 1. And we know that because if we press on the negative button of our input manager, it's going to give us minus 1, and if we hit the positive button, it's going to give us 1. So every frame we are uh, updating this number. Now, since we don't have any visual on that, it does nothing but update a value. We are going to say debug.log input direction. So, also, uh, when, when you're done updating the input direction with the input at axis horizontal, write that to me in the console. So, give me the value that is currently inside of that input direction. Okay, so now let's hit play and take a look at what we have. So in the console down here, you can see that it's spamming with zeros. The reason is that we are uh, we're logging the input direction. In this case, input direction is zero because we're not pressing on anything. Now, if we were to press on, say, uh, the left arrow key, we would get minus one. Now I release the, the left arrow key and we get back to zero. We do the same thing with the right arrow key, and it gives us 1. So if I was just to play with these, as you can see, it's, it's going to change the value of input direction. And we can use that value to start moving our player around. Okay, so that's pretty much it for this episode, guys. Uh, this is a really simple and efficient way to test uh, our input. So which way are we pressing? Are we pressing on the left or right arrow key? And uh, we're getting our information back inside the input direction field that we created. Now we're going to be using this information in the next episode to move our players, so stay tuned and have a good one. I'll see you next episode.